so Anthony Fowler has officially announced his retirement from professional boxing at age 32. I know that some of you guys probably couldn't care less about this news. I think it's fair to say that Anthony Fowler, probably not one of the most popular personalities in British boxing. However, I do feel like this news is relevant regarding uh, specific to a, a video I did recently. And there's a message that kind of helps to contextualize the nature of boxing once again. Uh, the video that I'm alluding to was the video I did on the comments of Tiafimo Lopez, where he obviously spoke about taking Josh Taylor's life. Um, very extreme comments, I think, is probably the best way to describe them. And that is a reflection on the extreme nature of boxing. And Anthony Fowler, he released a nearly three minute long video basically detailing why he's retired. Not going into nitty gritty details, but given an overarching reason, as well as you know thanking the people who, who helped him throughout his professional career, the kind of standard pleasantries that fighters go through when they retire. But, and I'm paraphrasing here, his reason for, for retiring was, he just realized that there's, there's more to life. He realized that he didn't want to sacrifice his health for the sake of money, for the sake of legacy. Uh, I believe that Anthony Fowler is a father to, to young children and he wants to be able to see them grow up and become adults uh, and see them prosper in life without having left too much of himself in a boxing ring. He also describes how he's got other means of making money now and even though he enjoyed some handsome paydays as a professional, it's just not worth it. And of course, uh, the, the kind of accolades that you, uh, you gain through boxing, the belts, the recognition, the legacy, it's good, it's great, but it doesn't last. You know, even though you can end up in the, the Hall of Fame or the you, you collect all these belts that you can hold on to as memories of your great career, eventually your time comes and the next generation come through and all of a sudden you're just a a kind of footnote in the in the vast history of, of boxing and you know I've got to really take my hat off to Anthony Fowler because it's his honesty how candid he is talking about this and just saying you know what I feel like there's more to life than just boxing I think that takes um takes real bravery to 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 admit that because as young men you know, Anthony Fowler's uh, 32, so I guess he's pushing it a little bit. But as 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 men, especially young men, you um you you have this warrior mindset a lot of the time. Your your birthright is to be a warrior, to to fight, to defend, to provide, and and really put yourself out there, put your life on the line to to achieve these things, to be the provider, to be the best, and. You know, if you start to realize that you don't have it in you anymore to do that, it can feel quite, you can feel quite ashamed of yourself and quite ashamed to admit that you don't have the, the, the dogged determination to do it anymore. And, you know, as I say, it goes against your birthright almost. You know, there's this warrior mindset where you fight right to the very end. And I can understand how a lot of fighters, they, may um, look for ways out where they can disguise their true feelings or they might, some of them, they might stick to it to the very end and really, um, really pay for it with their health. You know, we've seen fighters in the past who can barely string a sentence together these days. They're just, they're not living, they're just existing. They're just, they haven't died yet. That's really all they've got going for them. Um, and so it can, can make you question yourself. It can make you criticize yourself if you do what Anthony Fowler's done and, and call it a day when you still seemingly have more to give. But I see it on the kind of other side where, you know, you factor in how difficult a decision this is, but someone like Anthony Fowler has realized that, you know what, I just, I can't give 100% anymore, maybe. My mind is just too concerned. It focuses too much on the, 
the negatives that could happen. And Anthony Fowler's made an executive decision to call it a day and just put his health first, put his uh, family first in a sense where they're not going to have to be the ones that care for him should anything terrible happen in his career or if he just stays in it for too long. And that kind of executive decision, as I call it, I think that requires just as much bravery in a sense because you're having to put your ego to the side and, and think, you know what, I have to do what's best now. Because ultimately, isn't that what is, you know, that's what makes a man really is having that um, that bravery to make the decisions, you know, and and decide what is best for you right now and go after it. That kind of autonomy and that kind of, um, yeah, self-determination, if you will. Uh, so I, you know, uh, Anthony Fowler's ability to do that his honesty and how candid he was in describing the reasons why I take my hat off to him. And uh, yeah, ultimately, I think it's it links to the comments that um, Tiafimo Lopez made because when you're in that warrior mindset, you're in a sport where the intentions are dark and your opponent, even though he might not verbalise it, like say in Tiafimo Lopez's case, Josh Taylor might not say the same things, but I'm willing to wager he has the same intentions. So a lot of the time for these fighters to come out on top, they need to be willing to go further, to defend themselves, to win. And therefore they have to kind of whip themselves up into um, an extreme mindset where they're just willing to do whatever is necessary by any means. And so that's where things like that get said. However, if you're a fighter and your mind is elsewhere, you realize that, you know, I just don't necessarily have it in me anymore. I just, I value other things in life, more positive things in fighting. You're going to be in a very sticky situation when you're in against a fighter who really wants to take your head off and do serious damage and doesn't really care about your um, ambitions outside the ring. They don't care that you're a father, they don't care that you're a husband and so on. And it's like, you know, you're in my way. You're going to be like a deer in the headlights in that kind of situation. And so you just have to make that decision. Am I willing to go further than my opponent or do I step out of the way? Do I leave the sport and do I focus my efforts elsewhere in um, avenues other than boxing? So, yeah, um, I respect Anthony Fowler's decision. I think it, it's, it does take a degree of bravery to do what he's done. And, of course, um, wish him all the best in retirement. I've seen some people, they have described Anthony Fowler as a, an underachiever, as a professional. I'm not entirely sure I agree with that, to be honest. Um, Anthony Fowler always had some degree of ability. You know, he had a an extensive amateur career, went to Commonwealth Games, World Games, Olympic Games, um, and did, you know, decently well. I think the 2014 Commonwealth Games, he got gold, um, I think a bronze at the World Championships, didn't medal at Rio 2016. I think he was actually taken out in the in the first round against uh, Janibek Alimhanala. So it kind of shows the the level he was fighting at as an amateur. Um, always had quite a rough and rugged style. Wasn't the most uh, smooth operator. Had a, a weird kind of mechanical style, but was very strong. Um, it's kind of strange. His style, he fought like a bit of a tough guy, but I don't think he really had the punch resistance to, to pull it off. And you kind of saw that. Um, well, you saw a flash of it as an amateur. I feel, I feel like... I saw um, Fowler get knocked down quite a few times in the amateurs. And then as a pro, he obviously um, had some hard fights against Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, and Fitzgerald, obviously, he's kind of really um, gone off the rails recently. And over a few years, he's clearly had some very um, intense internal battles that he's unfortunately succumbed to. 
But Fitzgerald was a very talented amateur. I think he was actually at the Commonwealth Games in 2014 as well. And I can't remember if he medalled, but he was looking like a real, real good fighter, a real good talent. He was at welterweight, I think, at the time. Um, but yeah, Fitzgerald was an up-and-comer, but very talented. And, you know, he, he beat Anthony Fowler. Um, Anthony Fowler, I think he had a little bit of a rebuild and then went in against Liam Smith. So he's, Liam Smith's obviously quite a high-level fighter, former champion, but Fowler was losing at domestic level. And I kind of look at his style, look at his skill set, and I feel like that was really... I couldn't have seen Fowler doing much more past that. And yeah, he was 16-2 and two in his career, but you could say that his, his pro career was still young, but I don't think he was going to really get that much more out of it. So, and... I'm not, that's just my opinion, but maybe there's a possibility that Anthony Fowler has accepted that as well. Maybe he expected more of himself, but then losing to Fitzgerald and then losing to Smith, he was kind of like, maybe maybe I just don't have enough to go to the world level, elite level and compete with those guys. So I should just call it a day. I'm not getting any younger. And so I I, I don't know if that's, Fowler's thought process I'm just saying it could be a possibility um, but then that only adds to the kind of difficulty of making a decision like he's made because he's been in boxing a long time I imagine for over half of his life um, he was a, a pro for six years and he's only 32 so that's already a big chunk so boxing can be quite difficult to separate from something that you've done for so long and, and put at the forefront of your life because you, you can't really be successful in boxing any other way unless you're willing to fully dedicate yourself to boxing from a developmental perspective but also the amount of intensity you put into competing and, and preparing you know it's, it's going to be very difficult to separate from that when you've when you've been in that position for so many years and it makes that decision to retire even more difficult which I think in my case it only kind of adds to my respect for to Anthony Fowler for doing that and making that decision. But yeah, um, those are just my thoughts on this. Uh, I think it's an important message. It, it's a good example of how boxing is a tough sport. And if you just can't give any more, if you don't feel like you can give any more, even if you're physically still in your prime, if your mind isn't truly in it, you probably should call it a day and, and bow out. But um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think of this. As I say, I know Anthony Fowler's not the most popular personality, but I think it's um, I think it's something interesting to look into. But yeah, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. But for now, thanks for listening. I'll catch you in the next video.